Hey DNA family, I hope that you're having a great start to your week and having a good day. Um, so today we are looking in our wee book of devotions at when God changes our hearts, our actions change too. So the reading today is Luke 18, 26 to 19, 10. So, who can be saved? When the people heard this, they asked, then who can be saved? Jesus answered, God can do things that are not possible for people to do. People, Peter said, look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, all those who have left houses, wives, brothers, parents, or children for the kingdom of God will get much more in this life. And in the age that is coming, they will have life forever. Jesus will rise from the dead. Then Jesus took the 12 apostles aside and said to them, we are going to Jerusalem. Everything the prophets wrote about the Son of Man will happen. He will be turned over to those who are not Jews. They will laugh at him, insult him, spit on him, beat him with whips and kill him. But on the third day he will rise to life again. The apostles did not understand this. The meaning was hidden from them and they did not realise what was said. Jesus heals a blind man. As Jesus came near the city of Jer Jericho, a blind man was sitting beside the road, begging. When he heard the people coming down the road, he asked, what is happening? They told him, Jesus from Nazareth is going by. The blind man cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The people leading the group warned the blind man to be quiet. But the blind man shouted even more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the blind man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see. Jesus said to him, Then see, you are healed because you believed. At once the man was able to see and he followed Jesus, thanking God. All the people who saw this praised God. Zacharias meets Jesus. Jesus was going through the city of Jericho. A man was there named Zacharias, who was a very important tax collector, and he was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was not able to because he was too short to see above the crowd. He ran ahead to a place where Jesus would come, and he climbed a sycamore tree so that he could see him. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacharias, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. Zacharias came down quickly and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to complain, Jesus is staying with a sinner. But Zacharias stood and said to the Lord, I will give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times more. Jesus said to him, salvation has come to this house today because this man also belongs to the family of Abraham. The son of man came to find lost people and save them. We have two readings from the Old Testament today, which is the first one is Jonah 3, 4 to 5 and verse 10. After Jonah had entered the city and walked for one day, he preached to the people saying, after 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God. They announced that they would stop eating for a while and they put on rough cloth to show their sadness. All the people in the city did this from the most important to the least important. When God saw what the people did, that they stopped doing evil, he changed his mind and did not do what he had warned. He did not punish them. And the second reading is 2 Chronicles 31.1. When the Passover celebration was finished, all the Israelites in Jerusalem went out to the towns of Judah. There they smashed the stone pillars used to worship gods. They cut down the Asherim idols and destroyed the altars and places for worshipping gods. In all of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim and Manasseh, after they had destroyed all of them, the Israelites returned to their own towns and homes. So our insights today read, True repentance occurs when we begin to see sin from God's point of view. When we see the way our sin has broken his heart, perhaps the idea that God's heart can be broken by our sin is new to you. In Genesis 6, 5-6, we are told then 
the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. God was so disappointed with what he saw that there was grief or sorrow in his heart. Jesus also was brokenhearted as he wept over Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Luke thirteen thirty four. God's heart aches over our sin. It alienates us from him and from our fellow believers. If we want to have victory over sin and turn our lives wholeheartedly over to God, then we must see our sin from God's perspective. No sermon on hell can ever change a person's heart like seeing the grief sin has brought to the heart of the one who created us. We must ask God to show us what our sin does to him. As we do this and begin to understand his great love for us, despite how much we have hurt and grieved his heart, turning away from that sin is the natural thing to do. This is the test of sincerity and of the level of our desperation to be right with God. Floyd McClung. So our action point today is, do you think the people mentioned in these passages recognise that their sin grieved God? And what in your life grieves God? So as you journal on those two things today and have a think about it, um, if you have any questions or thoughts, we'd love to hear them. Um, they bless us greatly as a DNA team, but also as a DNA family to hear um, each other's insights. And I hope you have a really blessed day and have a great um, week as you um, embark on what these insights mean for you. Lots of love. Bye.